Hi, so I am 37 weeks pregnant. Um, this might be a long video because I have a lot to update on. It's been a long time since I've made a video, plus so much has changed in like the last two months that, I don't know, it's crazy and disappointing and I'm processing a lot right now. <laughs> and um, yeah, so let's see, how should I start? Um, originally, my plan was to have an out-of-hospital birth in Des Moines, which is about an hour and a half away. Um, we were going to have to, someone was going to have to drive me up, and then someone would have to be here with the girls, and um, I started to become uncomfortable with that because, one, I didn't know if my husband was going to be here or not, and two, my mom, at, the, at that time we knew there was a possibility my mom would have to accept an out-of-state job right before my due date. So those two things made me feel like it would be a lot easier to arrange help if I was just birthing locally. So about two months ago, I brought that up and um, I wanted to, I was, my plan then was to just transfer to the local hospital and try to just deal with everything there, even though I knew it would be a lot harder to have the birth I want in a hospital setting. But I figured I could still make it happen and it could still be okay, even if it wasn't really what I really wanted. Um... But then my midwife really wanted to help, wanted to make things happen for me. So she really tried um, to get things arranged so that I could have a home birth. Um, we had our visit with her about a week ago where she came and she checked everything out and everything seemed okay. But um, what she couldn't really predict was going to happen is that um, a lot of her nurses that she has assist her in deliveries um, would not be willing to come this far. So I think she thought she would be able to get um, more of them to cover, you know, because, she, you know, even if two or three of them say, okay, that doesn't mean that they're going to cover all of the possible dates that I could go into labor. So without her being able to cover every single day, she wasn't, she wasn't really comfortable doing the home births and she didn't know that she would have um, a nurse here to assist her and she didn't feel like she should take that risk, you know, which I appreciate. And that's a sign of a good midwife that they know when the situation, the scenario is not going to work out. So um, I appreciate that she did that. It's disappointing, of course, and um, it is difficult since I am 37 weeks pregnant and this all just happened, you know, yesterday. <laughs> so, um, so now I'm going to be having the hospital birth. I met with an obstetrician today. My midwife was nice enough to contact him and explain the situation so that he was willing to take me so late, you know, because normally they would it would be difficult for them to take patients this late since they're not really going to be able to go over all the same things. But I figure this is my third time around. I really, like, all the stuff he told me today it was stuff I already knew, and it was kind of a waste of time. But I guess they just act like you've never had a baby before, no matter how many times you've done it. So, um... Or, like, you can't read things on the internet because a lot of the stuff he said to me was just, like, duh. Like, why would I do that when I'm pregnant? Like, <laughs> I don't know. But overall, it was okay. He was very supportive of me not using pain meds. In fact, he even made it sound like in, there would be some cases where if I asked for pain meds, he might say that it's not the best choice at the time depending on what the situation is. So he was very, very pro-unmedicated. Um, birth. Um, now I don't know what that will mean for all the other things. So like, I'm not really worried about actually going through labor. What I am worried about is after when, um, um, after the baby has been delivered, you know, I want the baby to be put onto my chest and I want the cord, um, clamping and, um, cutting to be delayed until the cord is finished pulsing. You know, I want to be able to establish breastfeeding and everything before the baby's taken away from me. And, you know, with Adelaide, I got to do all that. And that was just how the birth center did things. You know, I didn't have to ask. I was like, this is what we do. Do you want to do it this way? If not, we'll do whatever you want to do. But, you know, at the birth center, I was in control the whole time, every aspect. It just, I never felt like they told were telling me this is what we should do, or this, or this is what to do now. It was more like, this is what we, this is what normally happens, you know, and it was always, I always felt like I had options that I could say, no, I don't want to do that, or I could say, I'd rather do it this way. 
the whole time it was, you know, I was in the driver's seat and I'm really nervous that it's not going to be like that in a hospital because it wasn't for my first, you know, I was in the hospital, I had my first daughter, McKaylee in a hospital, you know, and I know that everything will be okay if things happen that way because, you know, we did still have a great attachment early on and we did establish breastfeeding successfully and, you know, and she was taken away from me right away. She wasn't put onto my chest or anything. So, you know, I know that things can be okay if that happens and if things have to go, you know, if I can't get my way, which I will be disappointed because, I mean, it's my birth. I should be the one in charge, but it just feels like a lot of times you just have, you just end up getting so tired of fighting that you just have to do things the way they want you to. And, you know, that's part of the reason I wanted to avoid going to a hospital again because I just, I hate being a pain in the ass and that's what's going to happen is I'm going to be the pain in the ass patient who doesn't want to do things the way they normally do things and, you know, but it's just like that should be, you know, they're providing me a service, I should have a say in how that service is provided. You know, it's just, I don't know. I shouldn't make any presumptions, I'm just kind of going off of my last hospital birth. We'll see when I actually go in and, you know, talk to people there, when I actually get to see the um, labor and delivery unit. We'll get to see how that um, goes, and hopefully I'll just get a nurse who's really supportive of everything I want to do, and we'll just follow, you know, I think, you know, I wasn't going to have a birth plan. I was just going to say what I wanted at the time, but I think I'm going to have to make a birth plan because I'm just so nervous about constantly having to remind people. And um, let's see. My biggest disappointment is that... The girls won't be there. Um, Adel or Michaela was present when Adelaide was born. Like she kind of was just playing around um, for most of my labor, and then when I came to pushing time, her and my mom came in, and she was there when Adelaide came out, and she got to come and she had to see her sister immediately, and it was just I don't know, it was such a great bonding moment in that you know time. And like I said, I know things will be okay without that. I know it'll be okay, but it's just knowing that I had that before and I'm not going to be able to have it this time. It's just hard, you know, and like I'll deal with it and everything will be okay and it's not going to be awful and, you know, as long as I have a healthy baby, that is what matters, but, you know, it's, it's just hard knowing that things could be different and things could be more enjoyable and they won't get to be because of ho hospital policy, you know, because the girls can't be in there. You know, I'm allowed to support people, but there's no, you know, no children allowed in until after I'm, you know, whenever they deem me ready for visitors, that's when the girls will get to come in. And the benefit of having her in the hospital is that we will be in town, so my sister or my aunt will just be able to bring the girls over as soon as I'm ready to visit. If we were to go to Des Moines, there's a good chance that the girls would just stay here in the town we live in and they wouldn't get to meet their baby sister until a day or two later. So at least in this situation, they will, it will be, you know, within an hour, within, you know, as soon as possible. It'll be within a few hours or hopefully less, but, you know, I'm just kind of, I'm kind of preparing myself for not the worst, but for a less than ideal situation for, you know, what will be less than ideal in my head. Because I don't want to, you know, I'm, I want to deal with my disappointment now. And then hopefully after, I, it'll be like, you know, this was okay. This is, you know, this is what I expected. I knew that this was going to happen. So, you know, I'm just kind of trying to cope with all of that. Because it is disappointing thinking you're going to be able to do things the way you want to do them. And then all of a sudden, no, you're going to have to fight to do things the way you want to do them. So, I don't know. Like I said before, I shouldn't make presumptions. Maybe this hospital will be better. But, um... Other than that, I'm not really sure what else to update on. I'm getting really close to 10 minutes, so I should probably hurry. Um, although I'm pretty sure I can have my minutes, my, I can have 15 minute videos, so you know, just have to deal with a long video today. <laughs> um, my mom did end up getting a job out of state, so it's kind of, that, and I, that actually had to do with part of the reason my midwife um, decided it wasn't good, because I guess she thought that my mom could maybe fill in some of the nursing duties. Um, without, you know, some of the nursing duties if she couldn't bring a nurse. I don't really know. But since that was part of what um, made her uncomfortable with coming since my mom would not be here to um, assist at all. And so, because um, she will be leaving 
next Friday she'll be moving and she'll just, you know, be starting her new job down in Kentucky. And I'm really, really excited for her. And part of the reason I wanted to birth locally was so that she could feel comfortable taking a job, you know, out of state. So um, I'm really, really happy for her and really excited for this, you know, new, um, new section of her life. Um, other areas, uh, Michael will be here this weekend. He is going to be here in just a matter of days. And I will get to go pick him up from the airport. And oh, I'm so excited because I'm, you know, like the chances of me going to labor in the next few days are just like not, I don't think they're very good. Um, he checked, the doctor checked my cervix today. And he said he doesn't normally, he doesn't check regularly before, you know, labor and delivery. He, um, the only reason he checked, I think, was because he had never, because it was our first visit ever, you know, so he had never seen things down there, I guess. I don't really understand. But um, he did say that my, my cervix is really long, although it is soft and it's not opening at all, you know, which uh, with both, with well, at least with McKaylee, I didn't dilate at all until the day I was in labor, so I never really expect any of that to be going on until I'm in active, until I'm actually in labor. But, um... Yeah, so he said that there's like a 90% chance that I would be pregnant in seven days, which is good. I want to still be pregnant in seven days, so that's totally okay with me. Although if I had the baby in seven days, then my mom would get to meet her before leaving, so that would be pretty neat. We'll see. It just Things happen the way they happen. Things happen the way they happen, and I'm not like trying to rush her, and I'm not, you know, whatever, rush Matilda or anything like that. So uh, I think that's about it. I'm going to, you know, I can't really think of my shells. It's been a very, yesterday was very emotional for me, dealing with my disappointment, but it is for the best because we have to do what's safest and not just what I want, you know, it's, I'm glad that my midwife could recognize when it was time for me to transfer care and, you know, before I'm even in labor, because I feel like maybe if she had come without an assistant, then we may have ended up going to the hospital anyways, so I don't know, we will... Just because she didn't have an assistant, I think she would have transferred me much at the teeny tiniest sign of anything, you know, just because she didn't have that extra pair of hands to assist. So I think overall, I think, you know, everything's going to be okay. I'm going to try to advocate for myself as much as possible. It does get frustrating. Um, but we'll just kind of see how things go. <laughs> um, hopefully, I don't know, maybe I'll update in a week. Maybe I'll update when I have the baby. I might make a video when I'm in labor. I was th I've been thinking about that, like just a, hey, I'm in labor and I'll post right away um, type video. But, um, yeah, I don't, I guess if I go to the labor and go into labor in the middle of the night, though, you won't be hearing from me. So <laughs> I'm not going to be making a video in the middle of the night. So um, I don't know. We'll see what happens. The next video, um, you see, it might, I might have be holding a baby. So, um, I'll show my bump real quick, because I'm getting super huge. I don't know if you're going to see, I will see it. This. See, I'm getting very, very large. <sighs> I'm so glad I only have a few weeks left. My hips have been killing me. So, um, I will see you in a week or two. <laughs>